Good morning. This is Eugene May. I am the teacher of Eagles Wings Ministries located in Dover, Florida. And I invite you to stay tuned for the next few minutes as we continue a series of teachings that I entitled, A Man Used of God. This is not autobiographical at all. It is things that really I have learned over the years of ministry. I've had young men, young women come to me in the past and, and ask me, uh, what's the secret of your success? Uh, the success that you've had in ministry and traveling to the nations of the world and doing the things that you have done. And uh, I never ever put them off and say, oh, I, you've got to learn this yourself. I've heard people do that. Oh, you, this is kind of thing that you learn the hard way by getting out there and uh, making mistakes. Well, people are going to make mistakes, but um, if I know anything that'll help you, I want to help you. That's the attitude that I've had. And so over the years, I've noticed certain things that I needed to have in my own life if I was going to be able to do the work that God had called me to do. And over these last couple of weeks, we've been talking about some of those principles. And the first thing we looked at was a man totally surrendered to God. And by the way, uh, this applies to men and women. It's just the fact that I'm a man and I wrote it from that standpoint. But the Bible teaches that in Christ, there's neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. And so the principles, I believe, apply to all of us. And so the first thing that we talked about was a man totally surrendered to God. God is looking for those who will surrender to him to let him actually be the boss, if you want to put it in those words. And then the second thing we looked at is a man filled with the Spirit. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Now, a lot of our doctrines get in the way sometimes because I was raised in a church where uh, we had the Spirit automatically when we received Jesus Christ as Savior. That was our teaching. And I discovered that Yes, I was led to the Lord by the Holy Spirit. In fact, the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that no one can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And so, yes, we do have the Holy Spirit in that sense. But to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and empowered by the Holy Spirit, that comes by us asking. In fact, Jesus said, that God would not give us something evil if we asked for the Holy Spirit. And so I encourage you to ask. And then to be a man of prayer. Uh, we talked about that actually last week. And God is looking for people who will pray. Let me ask you a question. Do you pray? It's just that simple. Now, we get all hung up and legalistic on prayer sometimes. And we begin to put things into little boxes and you don't pray if you're not on this knee or that knee or bowing or, or whatever. Well, I stand, I bow sometimes. Yes, I get on my knees, but most of the time I walk and pray with my eyes open uh, so I can see where I'm going. <laughs> and uh, I want to tell you, I just have conversations with God. If you walked with me around our property here, you would uh, be amazed at uh, how many times I'm just doing things and I am praying and I begin to have a conversation with God. And uh, this is a two-way street. I also listen in my prayers. I pray and yes, I share the things that I need to share, but I also listen to what God by the Holy Spirit is saying to me. Now today, I want to talk about being a man of the word, a person of the word. You see, in the book of Psalms, David said in Psalm 119, verse 11, he says, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now, I have my Bible right here in front of me. Uh, it's a 
New King James Version of the Bible. I'm not hung up on what interpretation or, pardon me, what translation that you use, but I use that because I'm familiar with the old King James, and it has pretty much the same roadmap, and uh, I uh, have modernized the language, of course, as I use the New King James, but any Bible that you use that has a good translation, and I could give you those, but I'm not going to, uh, use it. But hide that word in your heart, as David said, so that you might not sin against God. In Romans chapter 10, 17, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church, and he says, so then faith comes by hearing, hearing. All right, I use my ears, yes, to hear. But faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. When I hear the Word of God, uh, it's amazing what happens within me. Um, I'm one of those that uh, whenever I'm in the car, I love to listen to things. I, I listen to music. I listen to praise and worship. I, I even listen to the news sometimes. But the thing is, whenever I'm traveling, I often, back in the old cassette days and then the CDs, and <laughs> now it, you're really having it difficult to find an automobile with a CD player in it. You have to put it in yourself or you have to use some sort of an adapter. But I would put on the Word of God, and I would listen to the Word as I traveled. I used to drive sometimes thousands of miles to go to meetings because uh, I just uh, enjoyed driving. Today, I fly thousands of miles to go to meetings, but I would listen. And whenever I would get to the place that I was going to, it was amazing. You know, I, I'm only five foot 10 inches tall. I'm not extremely tall. But uh, I would feel like I'm six foot five or six when I'd, got, you know, when I'd get to the meetings. Because you see, what is happening on the inside is that I would be built up, built up in faith. And uh, so I would arrive at the meeting and, and I wouldn't have to uh, go off somewhere and get in the spirit and, and, and pray for a long time to get direction from God. I'd been listening to the word and I'd been praying in the spirit while I was driving. And you see, God does things like that. He takes the word and he puts that word within us. I, I love the Old Testament and especially the Psalms. In fact, a moment ago, I took Psalm 119 verse 11 and used it as a starting place for this teaching on the word. I have hid your word in my heart. Now, I love the word, and whenever I get in that word, I find that my faith begins to increase. But as I go into the Psalms especially, there's one Psalm that says this, he sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and healed them. That is amazing to me, that God in a time of need in Israel, simply sent his word and healed them. Now, in the book of Ephesians, the apostle Paul talks about spiritual warfare in chapter six. And he talks about having done all to stand. And then he says, I want you to put on the armor of God, put on the whole armor of God. And he lists the armor. And then he comes down to verse 17. And he says, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. In spiritual warfare, I use many weapons. I use the name of Jesus. I use the blood of Jesus. I use my testimony. I use my praise and my worship. I, I use 
uh, the prophetic word. I use a lot of different weapons. In fact, Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1.18, take the prophecies that you have received, and with those prophecies, wage a good warfare. Now, I use those weapons, but I not only use those weapons that I just mentioned, and I may have left out a few that you'd like to use. I'm not hung up on the fact that my list is the perfect list, no. But one of the things that I find myself using constantly is the Word of God. The Word of God. Because you see, Paul came down to verse 17 in the sixth chapter of Ephesians, and he said, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, that sword is a sharp two-edged sword. Uh, the book of Hebrews talks about that. It talks about it being sharp and two-edged and being able to go in and divide even the soul from the spirit. You see, God uses his word to deal with us. Now, God is not legalistic. I'm not legalistic. But when the word says something, I let it do its perfect work in me. That's the idea that we're talking about. The word works, folks. And so God is looking for people like you and like me who will take the word and use it. I started to say, take the word and stand on it. And yet that is what we do. We take a stand of faith. I remember, though, one time in church, a lady came and she said, you know, I'll tell you what, that word does work. In fact, this week, I was having problems with my feet. My, my feet were hurting me. And she said, I just took my Bible and put it on the floor and I took my shoes off and I stood on the word. And I said, Lord, I'm not just figuratively standing on the word. I'm literally standing on the word. And she said, you know, after a few minutes, my feet didn't hurt anymore. And I think God took her at her word. Now, I know you can say, well, that's ridiculous. We don't, we don't go around standing on a book. No. But the word inside of that book is what God wants us to use. He said, and I want to remind you of what I quoted out of the book of Psalms a few moments ago. He sent his word and healed them. And so the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17, he says, we take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I've heard so many testimonies over the years of people who were involved in the circumstances of life, who were involved with tremendous disease, tremendous pain, who simply began to quote the word of God. You see, the Bible says that he bore our sicknesses and our pains, and by his stripes we are healed. Those are scriptures right out of the word of God. And so I take the word of God and I use it as a weapon against the enemy. From a child, God began to put his word inside of me. My mother and father were believers, and uh, they would speak the word to us. They would quote that word. They would say things about the word of God just in passing conversation. And it's amazing. I remember I, hear, I would hear my mother say, well, the word says... The word says, and you say, well, boy, that's, that may be someone who's gotten sidetracked and off on a, on a tangent, but I want to tell you if that sidetrack is where I am, I'm there. If I'm off on a tangent, that's where I am because of this word that I have. You see, the word of God is powerful. The word of God works when we use it. And I was sitting here preparing for this teaching today, 
And I began to remember some of the things that happened. You see, the Bible says that God hears us when we pray, but I believe he hears us when he quotes his word, when we quote his word to him. I remember on the farm, I was just a boy, and I remember getting involved in some difficult situations. And the word would come to me about his protection and about his blessing on my life. And I would claim that word. Now, I have learned over the years now that the promises in the word are what God wants us to really use. There are over 7,000 promises in the Bible. In fact, I heard someone say one time, there's 7,487 promises in the word. Now, I have not counted them, so I'm just going to take that person's word for it. Is that okay? But every promise in this book belongs to us. God wants us to take it and put it inside of us. As we hide that word in our heart, we not only do not sin against God, we not only have that protection, but we have healing, we have miracles, we have provision, we have finance, we have everything that we need according to the promises of the word of God. Let me tell you, as we get those promises inside of us, things begin to happen. Circumstance comes up and you find yourself feeling ill and you can say, by his stripes, I am healed. You see, I like to personalize the word of God. I think that's been a secret of my success over the years in ministry, is to personalize the word. Whenever I have a problem, I say, I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. And then I would say that he has provided all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You see, that's one of the secrets, I believe, of using the word, is to personalize it. You say, well, Brother Eugene, I, I, I don't want to take away from the word. I don't think you are taking away from the word. Let me give you an example. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, and I'm using old King James English here, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, it seems to be talking about the world and the whosoever, the person that's unnamed out there. But I like to use it, for God so loved Eugene May, that he gave his only son, that if Eugene May would believe in him, he would not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, that's the way I view the Word of God, and I take it and make it personal unto me. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus is speaking in that particular section of the Word about the Good Shepherd, and in the middle of it, he just breaks in, and it's almost like he changes subjects for a moment, and he says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, that's what Jesus said, but I like to take it and say it like this. Well, the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, he came that I, Eugene May, might have life and that I, Eugene May, might have it more abundantly. You see, those are things that we need to adopt in our lives if we're going to really be successful in the things of God, to make the scripture personal unto us. Now, I'm not gonna make that a law, but I'm going to say to you, I believe it's good advice. Begin to personalize the scripture. Begin to learn the promises. I notice 
at time to time as I go into a Christian bookstore or sometimes even online looking up things, I'll find listed promise boxes. And uh, of course, there's not enough for over 7,000 promises, not enough room for over 7,000 promises in one of those little boxes. But I want to tell you, I've sat down at people's tables and in the middle of the table where you would have the salt and pepper and, and the other condiments, here's this little box. And you take out one of those little cards and you see a promise. And the people in that home, I'll tell you what they do. Every day they sit down and they read those promises. What they're doing is putting that word in their heart. And they're putting it there in order to be able to believe and trust and have confidence in their God. What did Paul say? I quoted it a few minutes ago at the beginning of this broadcast. He said that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so what it's going to do is to cause our faith to increase. I'm a person of faith. That's why I'm teaching here on Facebook and on YouTube and on other venues. I believe that God has put faith within our heart as a gift. And as we then begin to get into this word and this word gets into us, then suddenly, we become powerful believers in him and that faith that is growing inside of us begins to produce good fruit. I want to pray and ask God's blessings upon the teaching today. Next week, we're going to continue and we're going to continue talking about a man used of God. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray for God's blessing upon you. Lord, I thank you that today you are our God and we are your children, your sons and daughters. And Lord, I thank you that your word is working in our lives. Your word is working in the circumstances that we find ourselves in day by day. I thank you that your word is being hid in our hearts so that we not only might not sin against you, but that we can use that word in time of need so that we can be able to overcome the enemy. And we thank God that we are truly overcomers today. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. The series that I am in right now on a man used of God is based upon a little book that I wrote a few years ago called A Man Used of God. And this book is available on Amazon. Just go to Amazon and look for Eugene May and that book. And it's in both, well, actually three languages, English, French, and Spanish. And I encourage you, if you want to, buy it directly from us here at Eagle's Wings, write us at P.O. Box 1259, Valrico, Florida. Valrico is spelled V-A-L-R-I-C-O, Florida, 33595. And uh, the cost of the book is $10, and that includes shipping. And we pray that God blesses you this week. In the name of Jesus. Have a good week. See you next Tuesday.